unlimited possibilities presents creating your seat at the table with your host ashley little as she welcomes her guest to the table welcome to creating your seat at the table i am your host ashley little a little bit about myself corporate professional by day serial entrepreneur by night seven-time best-selling author ceo and founder of ashley little enterprises llc founder and owner of Talk Radio and TV Network, LLC. Tonight, we have an amazing special VIP guest by the name of Tanika James. A little bit about her. Tanika is the mother of an adult daughter, a Christian, a serial entrepreneur, author, and an innovator, who is dedicated to using her voice to inspire other multi-passionate entrepreneurs by teaching them how to embrace their many talents, rise above social limitations, focus on impactful goals, and live out their potential. Tanika is armed with a bachelor's degree and dual master's degree from DeVry University in business administration with a concentration in health service management. She holds additional certifications in various business sectors. In addition, Tanika received her ministry credentials in 2012. Tanika's journey as an entrepreneur began at the early age of seven. Working alongside her father and uncles in their respective businesses, she has an incredible wealth of business experience and serves as the owner and CEO of Autumn Days, a supported living agency and long-term care facility. Be Social, a rec- recreational center for individuals' development, developmental disabilities, and JD's Kitchen, a quick service restaurant. When a woman develops her confidence, get out of her own way, and begins to apply God and principles to her life, there is not a plan, scheme, plot, or strategy that can keep her from walking into the things purpose for her life. Walking in honesty and having faith, discipline, perseverance, and character are just some of the tools in Kanika and Entrepreneur Toolkit. Welcome, welcome to the table, the amazing Kanika James. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. I'm excited to have you at the table. So tell us more about your journey. So my journey actually to being an entrepreneur, it stems from negativity that I received growing up as a child. Um, I've always heard things like, oh, you'll never amount to anything and you know, you're just going to grow up to be, you know, this or that. And I was determined to make sure that I did not grow up to be what those people, the naysayers, expected me to be. So I had a little bump in the road, but I was able to turn things back around. I had my daughter as a teenager. I was able to take that experience and actually uh, turn it into a positive. So uh, from there, I worked hard. I went back to school. I got my degrees. After I got my degrees, I landed a professional job in marketing, and everything was going great, and I was laid off. There was a tornado, and that building was self-insured, and so they had to lay people off, and so I was the last one to get laid off. And so I was feeling kind of lost, you know, asking myself, okay, what's next? I got a job at a rental car corporation, and I remember a lady coming in there, and she was helping uh, someone who was disabled, and I saw the way that she was treating them, and I thought, you know what, I would like to get a job doing the same thing, Mm -hmm. and that job just landed me on the path to entrepreneurship, so here I am now, 17 years later, Serial entrepreneur. And all the cases at one time, right? You, you you didn't know that that job would lead you and push you out into entrepreneurship, right? So that's why it's so important to enjoy the journey. Yes, yes. It has definitely been a journey. Um, I, just one step at a time. I tell people all the time that entrepreneurship, it is literally one step at a time. Mm-hmm. One step at a time. I definitely agree. Now, Tanika, you are passionate about using your voice to empower to inspire other multi-passionate entrepreneurs to embrace their talents and live out their potential please tell us more yes because a lot of times we we're told you know go to school uh make good grades in school graduate from school land a good job nobody is telling us hey create wealth on your own no you know you're not limited to that position. So you need someone to tell you, hey, there's other opportunities out here. And so I believe that me being exposed by my father and my uncles 
they were self-employed, that gave me a little bit of confidence when it was time for me to step out that I can do it because I saw them do it. So now I'm passionate about telling other people, hey, you, you know, you can do this yourself. You know, you don't have to work for so-and-so. You can do this yourself. You can make that money yourself. And sometimes people don't believe that they can do it. They don't have the confidence that they can do it. So my goal is to help instill into people that they can do it. Just take a step. When you take that first leap of faith, it will lead to the next step. And all you need somebody, all you need is someone to really just show you, hey, there's the door. Go over there and open it. And once you open that door, it leads to a whole new experience. And I just want to make sure that women not only know that they can do it, but I want them to be prepared for it. And that's so important, right? Why do you think people have, why do you think people let fear hold them back, right? Why do you, why do you think that is one of the, probably one of the number one factors of why, why a lot of people sit on their dreams? So why do you think people let fear hold them back? See, it's fear of the unknown. What's going to happen to me? It's all of the what if. You know, we, we talk ourselves out of things because we don't know what's going to happen. You know, what if I fail? Well, what if you don't fail? Um, you know, what if people laugh at me? Well, what if people don't laugh at you? For whatever reason, we tend to gravitate to the negative things instead of the positive things. And so um, we even have a fear of death. You know, I don't want to die. I don't want to do this, and I don't want to do that. If, if, if you let go of some of those things, let go of the what if, and let God have his way in your life, It'll, you'll open yourself up to a whole new realm of possibilities if you just let go of the what if. So I believe that you need someone to tell you to let go, and that's my passion right now. I haven't mastered it yet, but I, I, I have a little bit up under my belt where I can tell some other folks, hey, listen, here's what I did. And because I did and God helped me through it, I know he can help you too. And have you had some different things in your life that pushed you out to want to coach others on this? You know, did you have some different, you know, um, what's the word, challenges that you had to face that really wanted you to say, I want to go help others, you know, find their potential and find their voice? Oh, yeah, the biggest thing that I would see right now is social media. Um, we are in a phase where, you know, we take everything on social media to be gospel and we run with it. So people right now, I see them glamorizing the title boss lady. Um, there's more to being a boss than just the title. You know, it may look good, it may look great, it may look glamorous, but you need to know what you're getting yourself into because you're the boss when things are going well and you're the boss when things are going bad. So I want people to be educated. Um, I see some people, you know, starting out uh, in their businesses and they're, you know, just running through their capital, running through their money, and I'm like, whoa, hold on. You know, did you think about this? Did you think about that? And so I just see people doing things the wrong way so often that I want to help them. I want them to learn from my mistakes. Yes, there have been many mistakes along the way. Some of the mistakes, um, not reading through contracts all the way, you know, just mm. trusting people and taking them at their mm -hmm. word. So mm -hmm. uh, I even had a business partner when I started my business. Uh, we, didn't ha we just started the business on a handshake. And so out of nowhere, she walked away. Um, and then a year later when the business uh, – became profitable, she wanted back in. So uh -huh. I had to spend, you know, not just a thousand, but I'm talking tens of thousands of dollars to fight that whole situation. Learn from my mistakes. Like I said, I've been in this industry that I'm in uh, for 17 years, but I've been an entrepreneur for 12 years, and I've paid the price. So I want people to learn from where I messed up at. Let me give you that advantage. 
And thanks for sharing that, you know, because I'm a big person. If you don't trade market, it's not, not, it's not your idea, right? And so thanks That's for right. sharing that contract situation, especially in business, right? A lot of people forget that part, right? You should be having yes. contracts and NDAs in place because yes. what you just said does happen, right? And so you have yes. to protect yourself. Um, so thanks for shining light on that area because I do think that is one of a lot of big mistakes people don't make when they're in these partnerships and different business deals. They forget those contracts. Yes, sometimes so often we have an idea and we'll just start talking about the idea to this person or that person and we're not even thinking about the possibility that they can take your idea and capitalize on that idea or that thought process or go start up a business just like yours doing the same thing as yours and now they're your competition and they weren't even thinking about it until you, you know, sowed the seed. So you've got to be careful. You've got to create contracts. You know, there's a business side of doing business. You know, you can have a business that's just fun. Let's say travel. Okay, traveling is fun. Who doesn't love, you know, to travel the world? Well, there's a business side of that. you got to handle the logistics first to cover yourself. And a lot of times we don't, we don't think about that. We don't think about insurance. We don't think about security. We don't think about uh, attorneys. These, we don't think about taxes. Um, there's a lot more to unlocking a door to a building and flipping on the switch. And most of the time I see, I, I can't tell you how many uh, hairdressers and how many, you know, nail techs and, and how many even lawyers that I've talked to don't have the proper insurances in place, don't have the proper protection in place. So all of those things are, are, are very, very important. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you are the CEO and founder of Autumn Days. Please tell us more about your business and how we can support and follow and get involved. So Autumn Days is a supported living agency. We take care of individuals with developmental disabilities. We help them to build self-esteem, self-reliance, and to help reduce social limitations. So we send our employees into the houses of these individuals, um, and they just help them maintain or gain their independence. That service looks different for every individual that we serve. It could be a matter of us coming into your home, helping you to cook. Um, it could be a matter of us being a companion, or perhaps we're taking you to your doctor's appointment, maybe shopping, or just uh, recreation. I've even taken people, you know, to a restaurant and taught them how to, or proper etiquette at, at a restaurant. So we anything to help an individual with a disability maintain or gain their independence, that's what, what we are. So we um, contract with our uh, local county board here in Columbus, Ohio, as well as uh, the state of Ohio. We are licensed by them to provide services in all 88 counties here in Ohio. Um, our website is www.autumndays.org. Um, we just recently uh, got licensed as a long-term care facility, so we're now expanding our reach to go beyond individuals with developmental disabilities to just any individual that has a disability. And uh, we are also prepared to launch our home delivered meals program. Um, so with that being said, we ended up getting this building uh, to have a kitchen for this home delivered meals program. And while in the process, we thought, hmm, we've got this kitchen. Why not open up a restaurant? So that's the whole concept behind me owning a restaurant now. We're coming up on one year. Uh, we never just jumped out and said, let's open up a restaurant. We literally opened up the space for the home delivered meals, and it just, kind of morphed into a restaurant as well, as well as catering. So that's okay, who we I, are. I love all of it. Sounds amazing. So what are some strategies you would give to listeners who are looking to start their own healthcare business? What are some what are some strategies you would give to those listeners that are listening? 
Um, the first strategy that I would give is I would ask them to have confidence in themselves. Um, let them know that you can do this. Um, definitely let them know that uh, they need to operate with integrity because you want to be able to sleep at night. Um, that's one of the things that kind of distinguishes me from, you know, some of the people that I have even worked for is that somewhere along the way they, they forget about integrity. So integrity is very, very important. The next thing that I would tell people is to make sure that you're prepared spiritually, mentally, and physically because the healthcare industry can swallow you up. Uh, there is a crisis that can happen at any given time, so you've got to be prepared, um, you know, for the journey ahead. And then once you've got those basic things, I would tell someone, determine the objective first, okay? Health care, that's a broad spectrum. What type of health care are, are you interested in? Um, what problem are you going to solve? Um, what are you passionate about? You know, uh, the name of this podcast is Creating a Seat at the Table. Well, why is there a need for you at the table? Uh, why you versus the person down the street? So it's important that before you even apply for any license, before you take any test, find your niche, uh, find, uh, why, what, find what you're passionate about, and let that be the first step in building your healthcare business or any business for that for that matter. Um, I find it that a lot of people just open it up, open up a business and they want to do it all. And you have to, you know, people want to appeal to everyone. And when you appeal to everyone, you run the risk of appealing to no one. So the more you focus on your niche, the easier it is to provide value to your specific audience. So I would tell someone, get organized. Start from the end and work your way backwards. What do you want your business to look like? And once you have that vision of what you want your business to look like, then start writing down the steps and how to get there. And just work your way. Once you list those things out, then start on your first step. I love and that's so important because, you know, the healthcare industry is a booming business, right? And we know that it's a definitely an essential business and that, you know, you have to have a passion for doing it. Because it takes a special person to be in the medical field and to be in the healthcare field. Could you talk more about that? Yeah. Well, look at our current situation. Um, if you don't have a passion, your passion is what will keep you when things are going topsy-turvy. So right now, you know, you'll hear people say, oh, these are uncertain times. Well, if this is what you were created to do, this is your moment to shine. Uh, for most people, this is a crisis situation, but I handle crisis every day. For 17 years, I've been uh, attending trainings on crisis situations. In fact, I'm licensed at, uh, um, I have a certification in crisis prevention and intervention as well as health and safety. That's an ongoing thing, ongoing thing for us. Um, I may show up at work and find a patient, you know, going into cardiac arrest. Well, what do you do? That's not the time to fall out and start crying and having a, a hissy fit, I've got to step, step in and help save their life. So you've got to be prepared. You've got to have a clear mind. You've got to be focused. You can't go into work, you know, with all of your woes and worries from home. You've got to be have a level mind and a level head when you show up at, at work. And so, you know, the things that they're telling us to do during this current pandemic, well, those are things that we've already been doing. So, it, it's not necessary. While this is a crisis, you don't have to run around in a panic because you've been prepared. And so that's why I said earlier, my mission is to make sure that women are prepared. If you are prepared mentally, physically, and spiritually, you can get the job done. And so, um, yeah, just just prepare yourself. Prepare yourself 
And the biggest thing I would say is don't fear. Don't fear. Mm -hmm. I agree. And so with that being said, you have your amazing coaching business. We talked a little bit about that earlier. But what – tell us more about your coaching programs and how you are coaching entrepreneurs to embrace their talent. So what I'm asking is what makes your coaching programs unique, what makes them different, you know, um, could you talk to us more about that? Actually, the coaching, yeah, this is interesting because um, for I would say probably for about the past 10 years or so, I've had different entrepreneurs coming to me and they would ask me, first it would start off with one question, well, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And then it would be, well, can you help me do this? And so I would talk to my best friend. Her name is Bonnie. Bonnie, she she just suggested to me, she was like, have you ever thought about doing a training class? Because so many people need the knowledge that you have. And I would dismiss it like, oh, girl, I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. And she just kept saying it over and over. And then after a while, it became apparent that I needed to do something about it because I was starting to coach entrepreneurs during my work hours. I would invite them to come in. I had one person who wanted to know how to do payroll. I said, come on in to my office. I'm getting ready to run payroll. I'll show you how to run the payroll. I had another person who needed a policy manual written, and I said, I'm revising my policy manual. Come on in. And I'm doing this, and I had to realize, like, wait a minute, this is my time. I'm taking away from my own business. Let me turn this around and offer this as a service. So that's where I I had to um, look at what these entrepreneurs were coming to me for. What, What was the common denominator in all of this? Because they all had their ideas. They all had their passions. But what was missing was they didn't know the how-to, how to get started. How do I get started? I want to start in this new venture, but I don't even know where to go. And so I started noticing a trend in the pattern and what was needed, and I started to put a focus on that, and I started to write down things. And then I, I would follow back up on uh, with those individuals. And some of them are now million-dollar companies as well. So, you know, it doesn't take much to kind of look look at those things and say, hey, I might be on to something here. And so yeah. um, with the help of the Lord, I've developed a, a plan and a program to help people succeed. And honestly, there's nothing here beneficial uh, for me, per se, other than to help somebody else, to help someone else succeed. I saw a slogan Uh, the other day on social media, and it said that a boss, uh, the acronym for boss was believing others should succeed. And that's me. I believe that others should succeed. And it, it doesn't help me to withhold information from you. Somebody else helped me along the way, so why not pay it forward? Right. Mm -hmm. I love that. So for our listeners that are listening, I hope you're writing these nuggets down. I hope you're looking to to book Kanika because she definitely has the results. And now we were just speaking about, you know, creating your heat to tape the name of my show. And I always ask my guests this question, Kanika, and I see you built multiple tables for yourself. How did you create your seat at the table? I created my seat at the table by being intentional and methodical. Um, The first step is to observe. Um, If you just sit back and watch and listen, you can kind of hear what's missing. You can see it. Well, I, I won't say you can always. Sometimes you can't see it, but you definitely can hear it. And once you notice that there is a need, that's when you go into the planning phase. Let me let me plan let me plan this out. Let me be methodical. Let me be intentional about this. Um, and then, when you get that opportunity, when the door opens, 
I mean, shine. Don't just do it halfway. Just just do it. Put it, do it with everything in you. Do an excellent job so that you'll be invited back to the table. And I have found um, in my own journey to success, I have found that being faithful and being consistent and being honest, those things get me back to the table each and every time. And so if you do those things, if people can rely on you, some people will use you just for that. I can count on Kanika to be there. I can count on Kanika to show up. I can count on Kanika to study. And I can count on Kanika to deliver. If you can do those things, train yourself to do those things, you'll then create a need for you to be at the table. People will not want to hold a meeting without you at the table. So I tell people all the time, create value. Create value. You can be, you know, a hairstylist. You can be a barber. You can be uh, a, a doctor or a nurse. Create value, you know. If sometimes if you just engage in a conversation with people, you know, people may notice, hey, she took time with me. You know, you have to build a rapport with people, and that will keep people coming back. If you, I tell, I say this all the time, if you build up people, people will build up the business. You don't have to work hard to build up the business. Just build people. Be a people builder, and they will build your business. Yep, yep. You build it, they will come. If you build it, they will come. So what did failure teach you on your journey? Failure has taught me to just get up again and try it again. I may not succeed this time, but I'm going to get up and try again. Um I had to develop some thick skin. Um, and I, I think it's very, very key to be transparent in this situation because we don't always win. We don't always win, and sometimes we uh, we have to admit that we that we took a loss here in this area. If we can acknowledge, hey, I took a loss right here, but I'm gonna go back to the drawing board. And I'm gonna redo that thing, and I'm gonna get it better the next time. Um, at my restaurant this past October, someone broke in, and I considered that as a failure. I was devastated. I was hurt. Um, they broke in into our restaurant, busted out our windows, and tore up the register system, uh, creating over fifteen thousand dollars in damage. But they took nothing. They just did a lot of damage. And so that was an opportunity for me to go back and rethink things. I thought about it, hey, you know what? We could have had some security cameras in here. Um, we can start keeping the drawers open so that should this happen again, they'll just be able to walk in and see, okay, the drawers are open and there's nothing in here. We developed a training program for our, for our employees to let them know, hey, here's what you need to look out for. Um, be aware for these things. And so failure is an opportunity to learn. Learn what you did wrong, assess the situation, try it again. Yep, yep. Always a lesson, right? Always a lesson. But you have to go through it to get to that actual, to get to the end result. And a lot of people, they quit in, in the process. You can't quit in the process. You have to endure it. So Absolutely. you're very successful. So what did success teach you? Um, success has taught me that there is a God. <laughs> um, I didn't do this on my own. I, I didn't do this on my own. Um, I grew up in poverty. I'm originally from Chicago. Uh, we didn't have a lot, but what we did have, um, was enough for me. My mother, she was adamant that we were going to go to school and that we were going to get an education. My father made sure that we understood that there were people out in the street that were no good for us. 
he he helped us to understand that that life was real and it will swallow you up and eat you up alive. Uh, those are some things. So based on that, the expectation was me to only go so far. And so as I began to apply God's principles to my life, as I began to transform my way of thinking, um, I joined a church. Shout out to my church, Faith Tabernacle. Um, I joined the church, Pastor Rogers, Charles Rogers, Jr. He began to speak the word to me, and it became clear that I had to change my thinking. I had to elevate my thinking. And so I had to ask God to enlarge my territory. And as he did, he started showing me, okay, Kanika, do this. I would do that, and then I would go to another level. And then it would be like, okay, Kanika, go over here. And I would be at another level. And, you know, here I am 17 years later looking back like, wow, I climbed that many stairs. And I know I didn't do it on my own because I know if 17 years ago, you know, when I said, I even said it to someone, I said, I'm going to be a millionaire. And I said, you know, people laughed at me. Well, here I am 17 years later having a multi-million dollar company. So success has taught me definitely, I know I've went on and on, but success has definitely taught me that there is a God and that he is mindful of us. Absolutely. I love that. And so what are some positive words of encouragement you would like to give to our listeners during this pandemic that will keep them pushing forward, especially our business owners? Um, I want our, our business owner to be too fit to fear. Too fit to fear. Get your mind right, get your spirit right, and get your physical self right. If you work on those things, you can face anything that comes your way. And I do mean anything. Everything that comes to us, it may not be pleasant, but you can face it. You can get through it. And so um, a lot of times we may jump into this um, haphazardly, you know. Uh, we may jump into this uh, for whatever reason, but be iconic. That's actually a brand that I'm getting ready to launch here soon. Be iconic. Uh, look to be revered, uh, to be regarded with respect or tinged with awe. My story is that God can take a nobody and turn them into somebody for his glory. So just be iconic. Whatever you do, do it with all your might. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Be iconic. So what can we expect from you, Kanika? We're in the year of 2020, a new decade, a new year. What can we expect from you the rest of this year? You can expect me uh, to come into my own this year. I want to first of all give a shout-out to my publicist, Jessica Mosley, um, and she is my coach and my mentor. Um, she is pushing me to – just come into my own. So this year, I've, in fact, this week, I should say, I'm dropping a T-shirt line. It's called Too Fit to, Too Fit to Fear. Um, this week, I'm opening, reopening up my restaurant after being co closed for five weeks due to the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, I'm headed to Beverly Hills in November. Uh, have a speaking engagement there. I'm writing a new book. Uh, I'm working on that to be launched at the end of this year, and I'm working on launching my brand to be iconic. So, and just more of of, of telling the women that they too can do it. They can be iconic. Love it. Be iconic. Super congratulations on all the great things that you are going to birth in this new year, new season. So I can't wait to see the great things that you're going to do, Kanika. So congratulations in advance. So would you please tell our listeners how they can follow you and support you on all social media platforms? Yes, you can follow me at Kanika James on Facebook. You can follow me, Kanika Creative, and that's creative with the K. 
on Instagram. You can join my website at www.kjamesbanks.com. And you can also follow my restaurants at JD's Kitchen on Facebook. I'm sorry, yes, JD's Kitchen on Facebook. And then on Instagram, Eat JD Kitchen. And then, of course, Autumn Days. You can follow us there at www.autumndays.org. Also, so please follow and support Tanika. Definitely book her. She's definitely somebody you need to know and connect with. So, Tanika, thank you so much for taking the time out of your very busy schedule for coming to the table tonight. And I can't wait to invite you back. Thank you so much for having me. I've enjoyed this conversation with you, and I can't wait to come back. Awesome. And I would like to also give a special thanks to the amazing Dr. Jessica Mosley as well. She is a sweetheart. And so also I would like to give a special thanks to Sarah, my intern from Tennessee State University, who is now a graduate of Tennessee State University, and my other intern, Von Peria, who is a Winston Southern State University student. So you all may follow me on Facebook at Ashley Little and on Instagram at underscore Ashley A. Little. Thank you. At the table where Ashley speaks with corporate professionals, celebrities, entrepreneurs, authors, and speakers who are transitioning or have transitioned to entrepreneurship. 